Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming out this evening. My name is Brandon Randleman. I'm a local political activist. Are your mics picking it up? Okay. I'm gonna to have to enunciate this evening. How's everyone doing? Can you hear me? Good afternoon. And thank you all for coming out this evening. My name is Brandon Randleman. I'm a local political activist, a native of Windsor, Virginia, a graduate of Virginia State University. And today we are all here standing in solidarity with Army Lieutenant Karan Nazario to discuss the egregious events that took place on December 5th, 2020, and to, and to discuss our plan of action moving forward for our community. There's a quote that often comes to mind when these situations occur. And it says, there comes a point in every man's life when he has to say enough is enough. And today we are standing here as African-American citizens and leaders, and we are saying to this town of Windsor, to the Commonwealth of Virginia, and to the United States of America, that we as black and brown individuals have been targeted by an unjust and unfair criminal justice system for far too long, and enough is enough. We have to make one point very clear. The stop that was initiated was due to tinted windows and a license plates being in a different location on his vehicle. Please let that sink in, that at this BP behind us, guns were immediately drawn by the police officers and the situation for Quran could have ended a whole lot worse because of a minor traffic stop for tinted windows and a license plate. Lieutenant Nazario did everything correctly during this traffic stop. He slowed down and pulled over into a well-lit area. He placed his hand out the window and he politely asked what he was being pulled over for. But in return, these police officers drew their weapons on him immediately. They taunted him with statements they made during the stop. They pepper sprayed him and they used physical force during the arrest. This is the treatment of an African-American military officer received by our local law enforcement. That's why we are demanding full and complete transparency from the town of Windsor and the Windsor Police Department regarding all individuals that were involved in this matter. As a Windsor native, and a former student of Virginia State University. These traffic stops are all too common on Route 460. The Route 460 corridor in which this incident occurred on serves as a main connector 
for many African-American students and their parents as they travel between Virginia State University and Norfolk State University, two of our largest HBCUs in the Commonwealth of Virginia. This is a stretch of road that has become a bedrock for speed traps for many drivers as they travel through these small towns. After speaking with, with our community citizens, we believe that African Americans have been cited for traffic violations at a disproportionately higher rate on Route 460. In the coming days, we will be speaking with our state and federal officials and requesting that the appropriate investigations occur to ensure that minority civil rights have not been violated over the years while traveling on Route 460. Let me be clear, we all share one common goal up here, and that is that we will no longer stand by silently because Dr. King said it the best, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Thank you. We will, we will now have remarks from our esteemed president, Ms. Valerie Butler, the president of the Alawite County NAACP chapter. Good afternoon. I guess I don't need to introduce myself since Brandon introduced me. Well, anyway, my name is Valerie Butler and I am president of the local branch of the Isle of Wight NAACP. I want to thank you for coming out to our press conference this afternoon. Um, I also like for you to know that we have been in communication with Lieutenant Nazario's attorney. He states, thanks for the work that you are doing my client is behind you and agrees with what you are doing and appreciates it. After reviewing the video, there are several areas of concern by the Isle of Wight NAACP and our local community here in Windsor. We want to reiterate the initial stop occurred because of the location of Lieutenant Nazario's license plate and tenant windows. Lieutenant Azario did what many of us have done that live in this rural community. When the police signaled for him to stop, he slowly pulled over into a well-lit area. But this stop resulted in weapons being immediately drawn, the use of pepper spray, and physical force by the police to an active duty military officer in uniform. There are so many things that went wrong with this traffic stop, but it is indicative of what is happening around the country and how officers walk away from cases with no disciplinary action to include termination and or firing. That is why today we are demanding the following actions. Number one, we are expecting transparency from the town of Windsor and the police department. We want answers to the following. When did the investigation initially begin? We heard that it began when the incident happened, but is that what really happened? And when was it concluded regarding the December 5th traffic stop? When was Officer Gutierrez officially terminated? Were any disciplinary actions taken against Officer Crocker? And is Officer Crocker still patrolling our neighborhoods here in Windsor? If so, we are immediately calling for his termination. He needs to be fired also. We are requesting that the police department provide to the public what their newly implemented training requirements are with respect to traffic stops in the town of Windsor. We and the public deserves to know that. Number two, we are thankful that Governor Northam has acknowledged this injustice and has taken steps to correct this issue. However, after speaking to minority members in our community, we would like for an independent body outside of law enforcement to investigate the circumstances surrounding the December 5th traffic stop. Therefore, we are asking the Commonwealth of Virginia to give our elected 
Attorney General the authority to investigate this incident in its entirety. We are also calling on State Attorney General Mark Herring's Office of Civil Rights to investigate patterns or practices of biased policing during traffic stops in the Windsor Police Department. And number three, we stand with the Virginia State Conference of the NAACP to call on Governor Northam to call a special session of the General Assembly to pass House Bill 2045, ending qualified immunity for police officers. Police officers are sworn to protect and serve our community. Posted on the Windsor's police website, they state their core values are honor, integrity, courage, and commitment. We thank those police officers who uphold those core values and who put on their uniforms every day to protect and to serve the citizens to the highest standard. But it is imperative that these upstanding police officers encourage all of their field peers on the force to do the right thing. In the coming days, we will submit letters to all of the government officials mentioned today. We are expecting response from them and a proposed plan of action for the Windsor community. We will encourage the public to continue to support Lieutenant Nazario and the endeavors of the Isle of White chapter of the NAACP. Now I'd like to introduce Delegates Don Scott and Jeffrey Bowen. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I just want to thank um, the members of the Isle of Wight County Branch NAACP uh, and the community members uh, from Windsor for having me down here. Um, as, as the two previous speakers have mentioned, we yet again see what happens when the ugly head of institutional and systemic racism rears its ugly head in our law enforcement ranks. We have Lieutenant Nazario, a man who is serving this country in uniform, pulled over for a pretextual stop, something very, very minor. And as has been said, he, he did what we all do. When we're, when we're in places uh, that are dark, we pull to a light, well-lit area where we feel safe. And so I'm uh, here to lend my support, lend my commitment to work on uh, the bill for qualified and sovereign immunity because it's one piece, and I'm not here to suggest that that is the end all be all to really righting the wrongs in our criminal justice system. We have to do that. We have to fully examine our use of force standards across the state. And it might be time for a statewide standard. We need to figure out how we fund our police and law enforcement officers and what we fund. We need to really double down on de escalation training. We need to really hunker down and figure out which and who, off, which officers we're hiring, who these people are. Because they don't learn this stuff on the job when they're hired. And so I don't want to trespass on your time uh, any longer, but I will say this. I know I'm committed, and I know my good friend Don Scott is committed to doing anything and everything possible with our role in the state legislature to continue the good work that we've done over the last several months. Because we passed a bill in the summer that made these types of stops for minor traffic infractions illegal. And unfortunately, it was too late for L Lieutenant Nazario. But hopefully, and thankfully it won't be late, too late for other drivers. And I heard the president say she called on the attorney general to investigate the patterns in practice. And fortunately, I believe, Don, you correct me if I'm wrong, the attorney general has agreed to do that just as I was pulling in. And so we're glad to see him move from a monitoring and a wait and see attitude to actually actively using some of the uh, authority and power that the legislature has granted him. So I thank you for your time. 
and at some point I guess we'll answer questions, but let me turn it over to Delegate Don Scott. I'm going to be very brief. One of, one of the things that, um, I'm a former naval officer myself, and one of the things that made me sick to my stomach was to see this man in uniform being disrespected in the manner and the way that he was treated. It was shameful, it was embarrassing, it was disgusting. Neither one of those officers who perpetrated those acts should be wearing a uniform right now. They should not be in this community doing this type of work. That's one. Two, my good colleague Jeff Bourne has brought this uh, bill to end qualified immunity, but we know qualified immunity alone, that gets you financial compensation for harms caused, but it doesn't prevent the things that from happening. There is a law on the state code right now called the Law Enforcement Procedural Guarantees Act. Take a look at it. It protects officers when they get in trouble, they do something wrong, it gives them more due process rights than the average citizen. We have to take a look at that. And then lastly, we have to look at the officers on the job. These people, so a friend of mine used to do a lot of corporate training, and he said, culture eats training for lunch. The culture in this, in this organization, as it is demonstrated by those two officers, means that this was acceptable, it was the norm, they did not feel like they would be punished. Even when they saw this man was wearing an army uniform protecting their own lives abroad, they still felt very comfortable disrespecting him and abusing him. So what I'm saying is that some people that's not fit to ever wear that uniform. It's not, it's bigger than defund the police. It's bigger than uh, po police and practice, bigger than police accountability. Some of these guys should not be in uniform in the first place. They are not fit to do the job. They don't have the temperament to do the job. They don't have the professionalism to do the job. And they don't have the restraint to do the job. So hopefully as we move forward here in the next weeks, uh, we'll get some more answers. What I heard the uh, Madam President say that we need to know when did the investigation begin? What type of discipline? Because that's an important question. Did it only begin they started taking steps after, you know, they was, after they found out they got caught? Or did they do something earlier? Even, uh, even now, the Attorney General, to his credit now, has come out today, I just saw a memo, that he's going to start a patterns and practices investigation here in Windsor. But he needs to do the same thing in Virginia Beach. He needs to do the same thing in some other cities where these things are still going on. It's time for him to stop being, uh, stop standing on the sideline and take action and start protecting our communities. Thank you, and I'm, I'm happy to step aside. Good evening. I'm Daquan Love, State Executive Director for the Virginia State Conference, NAACP. President Robert Barnett, who was unable to be with us, asked me to provide brief remarks. I'm joined this evening, of course, with our local branch president, uh, Valerie Butler from the Isle of Wight branch. We have with us from other branches, uh, Galen Knoyton, our regional vice president, James Boyd. Did I miss any other branch presidents? I don't think I did. Uh, but we are standing here in solidarity. Uh, as Afra mentioned, this is not just about one traffic stop. And we cannot let it be just about one traffic stop. This is about decency, justice, and frankly, accountability. To tell us that a black army second lieutenant in uniform can have that type of treatment imposed upon him. Imagine what happens when the body cameras are off. Imagine what happens in, uh, on dark roads across the length and breadth of this Commonwealth. The Virginia NAACP says enough is enough. And that's why we have launched a statewide campaign to call for the end of qualified immunity. And we're demanding that Governor Ralph Northam call for a special session to bring qualified immunity for law enforcement officers to an end. Absolutely. We want folks at home, here, in the community to go to demandaspecialsession.com. That's demandaspecialsession.com and sign our petition. As of this afternoon, we already have 1,500 signatures on our online petition calling for Governor Ralph Northam to, to call a special session. Ladies and gentlemen, the time for statements and sympathies is over. We deserve action, and we deserve it right away. 
President and CEO Derek Johnson just said on CNN a few moments before I pulled up here as it relates to this and other instances across the country. If there were not a, if, if now is not the time that we need the NAACP, I don't know what time that might be. And so the NAACP, our units across the Commonwealth will fight and we will continue to fight and we will continue to persist until qualified immunity for law enforcement officers finally comes to an end. With that, that does uh, conclude the speaking program for this session. We will uh, begin opening for questions and answers. I know, uh, I'm not sure if the delegates uh, will have, I know they have to get back on the road, but I will answer questions from the NAACP. Sure. If you could please identify your name and your media outlet, and then we'll answer your questions. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Let me be unequivocally clear, the NAACP, local, state, and national levels are all working in concert on this issue of police brutality and law enforcement officer accountability. And that's exactly why our local uh, branch has called for some accountability measures here in the town of Windsor. The state uh, NAACP is calling for measures from the state level, and I know our national office through our Washington Bureau is also looking at other ways we are able to address this. We are done dying, and we will ensure that uh, law enforcement, uh, uh, law enforcement uh, officers are held accountable. Yes. Next question, please. Thank you so much. I know that the president did read a statement from from the lieutenant's lawyer, attorneys earlier this afternoon, um, and and so we are in contact with uh, them. And what we will say is this: we are focused on ensuring in accountability, ensuring transparency, and that policies are changed to prevent this from happening again. Next question. Brody Young from Brody Young Live um, TV. Yes. Thank you. My, me and my viewers want to know. What would it take for us as people to make a change inside, like the Congress, the Senate, and things like that? What would it take for us as communi the community to make a change or bring a change to Boston? Well, here's the first thing that folks can do. They ne I ne you need to call your state legislator, your delegate, and your Senate, and ev everybody has one here in the Commonwealth and call and ask them what is their position on ending qualified immunity and ensuring uh, uh, law enforcement officers are held accountable. Uh, this bill came up just this past session. It came up in special session, and, and it clearly we did not have the votes that we needed to. And so for everyday folks can call their state legislator. They can ensure that their legislator is supportive of these measures. But moreover, we have to look out for one another in common sense, making sure that we are uh, supporting common sense uh, reforms that were, are going to make sure that justice is served and transparency happens. Did you 
have something you wanted to add, President Butler? I also Butler. think that we have legislative days at Capitol Hill. You know, if there are issues and concerns that we are concerned about, then we need to show up, pay a visit to our legislators. Can I ask you one question? I'm sorry, wait, 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 wait. I was going to ask a question. I've heard some from some people, you know, commenting online. Uh, I heard that you're calling for the other officers to be to be fired, and I know there was also training for even younger individuals. Could, what's the end of Could he be retrained? You know, I have concerns. How did the town make a decision on which officer to actually fire? Um, it was actually Officer Crocker's uh, traffic stop, and the other officer actually tuned in with him. You know, I'm making the assumption that I was told by the town manager here that they had had some extensive training since this incident in December. Clearly this traffic stop is not indicative of that, and a traffic stop does not warrant police officers getting out of their car with guns drawn. If they stopped him for a missing license plate, they approached the vehicle from behind, they should have seen his license um, um, shown in his back window. That should have been enough evidence to at least deter the manner in which they approached him, and they should have had a, a calming uh, conversation with him. You know, police officers should de-escalate uh, the situation. And in this particular case, it was Lieutenant Nazario who actually tried to de-escalate it, but the officers continued to escalate it. I'm sure he's capable of retraining. I don't know that, but I think that in this day and time, was indicative of happening around the country. We cannot afford another traffic stop to happen. Lieutenant Nazario um, was fortunate that there were no guns fired, but what will happen with the next traffic stop? And I think both police officers need to be fired. And I want to add on to that just briefly here. It should not take a federal lawsuit for the town uh, to actually come out with this information. That's, that's what folks need to understand. It should not take what had to happen uh, if we're four months later. Uh, it wasn't until the local branch made a press statement. I know the state conference made a press statement. And late set Sunday night, that's when the town decided to release that information. And there's still some unanswered questions. It shouldn't, we should not take this much to get these questions. So rather than talking about the police officer being retrained, why don't we talk about making sure that black Virginians uh, feel comfortable and safe when they're approached by law enforcement? It is existing here. Um, the NAACP uh, has a concern about criminal justice. And I know on a regular basis, we have met with the police departments on the northern end of the county. Uh, have a very good working relationship with the Isle of Wight Sheriff's Department, as well as the town of Smithfield Police Department. Um, I do not know the police department here as well. I have had the opportunity to have a sit-down conversation with the chief of police here. Uh, we have met with them a couple of times, but it was planned to be an ongoing process. But with the pandemic coming about, you know, we kind of backed off some situations. Um, I, the last time you met with them? We met with them about a year ago. So, you know, based on what's happening in the community now, that is a focus that we plan to continue. We have also worked with the police department to try to get them more engaged in the community too, so that people in the community will feel comfortable with them when they see them out patrolling. One last question from Really Young Live TV. Um, do you think it's not enough of us coming outside our homes and voting so we can make a change Inside of like the um, Senate office, um, the, um, the, the city councilman, do you think more of us need to come outside our home, low income communities, and vote these people out so we can bring change inside of the office? Rhoda, that's a
very good question. Um, one of the projects that we are working on uh, currently now, uh, especially with the primary and the general election, we're, both, we're working on voter registration, but it's not only voter registration, we're also working on voter education. Um, we had a couple of protests last year when, uh, when the George Floyd incident happened and people were protesting, and it was a positive thing that happened in our county because we were able to get growth in our membership. We've made commitments to those communities in which people feel that their vote don't count. Um, a very good example of, is what happened in Georgia this past election. You see with people getting out, going to the polls and actually voting, you know, what it can mean. But I think that we need to encourage and educate our citizens that their vote is more important on the local level because that's the level where in which they're going to be more effective. And we have already started our voter reg registration process. We've had a couple of voter registration pop-up events, you know, already. Um, we have some uh, local positions that are coming becoming available. Um, we're trying to recruit people to encourage them if they want to make a difference in their community, then they need to run for public office. They need to run for school board. So there are some of the things that we're working with. Um, and working with the protests, one of the things that I did discover, we had one protest that was actually initiated uh, by a Virginia Tech sophomore. And I had the opportunity to meet with these people. They are so angry with what's happening, especially with br police brutality. Unlike myself, I like things in order to go about the right way. She said, Miss Butler, that's your generation. Our generation is not going to stand back and sit and be complacent with what's happening again. It's things like that that keep me motivated to want to make a change. And I'm hoping that we will see some differences in the town of Windsor. The population here is 73% white and 18% black. It's not about who's in majority. It's about justice and doing the right thing. So we have been in contact with uh, the con congressional delegation, and we are continuing to have conversations with members of the congressional delegation. You're absolutely right. We definitely need action, which is why we're calling for an end to qualified immunity here in the Commonwealth. And folks can go to demandaspecialsession.com so that they can sign that online petition and call on Governor Ralph Northam to bring the legislators back into session. Are there any other questions? Yes. They wasn't trained with them. They wasn't trained with them. They wasn't trained with them. They hired anybody to be a police. This man could be a police. This man could be a police. They're babies. Well, but they don't check no background. And, and that's another part. I've been in the Marine Corps. And I was a military police. 
you gotta have respect for people out here. That gun make you the most powerful uh, person in the world because you don't know what to do with it by pointing at it somebody. You know? But I'm saying all these people out here because I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I'm glad you're here so we can stick together, but we need more people. Let's pull them together. Absolutely. Not one, not two, but all of them. Absolutely. I've been in there 11 years, and I've seen this happen twice. Oh, yeah, that happened twice. I've seen it happen twice. But they need to do criminal, criminal background on the police law. Absolutely. Well, to, to me, I think they had police in the winter. It belongs to the family. Well, well we the have family members. They need to stop. They got too much authority. They don't have respect for us. And I tell you another thing. They don't want to stop. That I want to stop. They don't bother the white people. I see it every day. I do too. I see it every day. Need to stop. Need to change. Well, we really appreciate that, and we want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, this does conclude our press conference, and we uh, uh, we. If you have any additional questions, the media contact is on the press advisory. We'll be happy to address those questions there. Thank you. I do know that President uh, Butler and myself uh, will be made available if you'd like one-on-one -on -one interviews as well. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you.